Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 to 6. Understanding God's will in marriage. He said, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him. And he shall direct your paths. Say amen. Everyone in the overflow say aloud amen. Overflow three, four. Say aloud amen. That's right. Your life will never remain the same. Understanding God's will in marriage. This is a very important subject and our objective is just what it is. Getting a clear understanding of the will of God in marriage. By way of introduction, it is important to know it is important to know the will of God. Not just in marriage, but in every department of life. The will of God, that's the first thing to know. The will of God as it pertains, course of study, as it pertains, profession, as it pertains, where to live, as it pertains, everything. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 to 2, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the message of the living God that you present, your body is a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove, prove what is the good, the acceptable, and the perfect will of God. Not just for marriage, but for every issue of life. Second thing to note, God is specially interested in directing his people who are interested in his direction he is specially interested in directing his people who are interested in his direction that is you want me to guide you i am ready to guide you we, we read it already in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 to 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. And then Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 3. He said, Call unto me, and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things, including marital things, which thou knewest not. In Psalm 32 verse 8 He said I will instruct you And teach you In the way which thou shalt go I will guide you with my own eye Which way should I go maritally Which way should I go financially Which way should I go in business I am ready if you are ready Very very important Having said that as a foundation, why is knowing God's will in marriage necessary? What is the necessity of knowing God's will in marriage? The necessity. Because people think that getting a wife is just like getting a shirt or a shoe. First, God's will in marriage is necessary because a prudent wife or husband can only come by the help of God. A prudent wife or husband, a quality wife or quality husband, the right wife or the right husband can come only by God's help and favor. Proverbs 19 14. He said, Houses and riches 
are the inheritance of fathers but the prudent wife and in any case husband as well can only be from the lord it takes the favor the help the mercy of god to locate the wife or a husband that will not ruin your life from the lord that is why it is important is necessary because it is it takes all right because god who created you knows who is best suited for your composition knowing god's will in marriage is important because the god who created you knows who is best suited for your composition as a person in genesis he said he made them male and female when we talk about your composition talk about your emotional makeup we talk about your psychological makeup we talk about your Con your attitudinal con attitudinal makeup we talk about your potentials and your gifting everything that make you to be you if only God knows who can accommodate you because in all humility not everybody can tolerate you or rather not everybody can accommodate you not everybody is suited for you am i communicating at all i've come across great men and i see how god just put the right women in their lives i see baba Adebuya, i see papa Yedeko. you look at them and you say look this woman is the best person for this man you just look at them god knows god's will in marriage is necessary because the God who created you, He knows who is suited for you. Thirdly, God's will in marriage is necessary for the fulfillment of God's purpose for a person's life. It's necessary for the fulfillment of God's purpose for a person's life. because destiny is company specific where god wants to take you to not everybody can go there with you do you understand what i'm talking about when abraham was going to offer isaac he told the people to wait behind where he was going to go they couldn't follow him there Jeremiah 29 verse 11 he said for I know the thoughts that I think toward you say the Lord thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end this is how it is I know the plan I have for you plans of good and not of bad to take you to your destiny so this is how it is you cannot avoid the plan and fulfill the destiny <laughs> does that make sense to you if he says this is my plan of who to marry this is my plan of what cause to read this is my plan of where to live then you decided to avoid the plan you didn't marry who you are meant to marry or you got hooked up wrongly and expect to fulfill destiny impossible i looked at when this 
Lizzie Osborne passed on. It was as if T.L. Osborne died. He's with the Lord now. Both of them are with the Lord. Those were that couple, T.L. and Tommy Lee and Daisy Osborne, Kenneth and Gloria Copeland, Charles and Francis Hunter. Those were the three couples that God gave me the picture of that I saw. That that formed for me a picture of man and wife in ministry. At that time, I didn't know uh, our Father and the Lord so much. I didn't know about the marriage and the relationship so much yet. Those were the pictures I saw. All that T.L. Osborne needed to do in any crusade in the world is to appear on the stage and carry the microphone. Because Daisy had gone ahead gathered the pastors organized the, con the committee the meetings done every meeting with with all the locals to set the stage set the equipment set the lighting set everything and tl just comes out and says take the microphone preach in some meetings 90 blind eyes he didn't have to bother his head with crusade stage or, 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 or equipment or anything because God gave him somebody that assisted him not to waste his life. Daisy too was, a, was highly anointed. She was a minister in her own right. She went somewhere in, in Latin America where a, 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 a juju priest tied a snake around his waist and and the people where he was bewitching the people and daisy came with fire in her eyes say is that what you think is power give it to me the man was shocked and see a woman asking for the snake and daisy collected the snake by the head it became a stick the same way that the rod of moses became became a snake and swallowed the rods and turned back into a stick. It became a rod. It became a stick in her hand. That was how the power of that priest died that day. He had no option but to give his life to Christ. Why, I, why did I bring that story? What ministry could T.L. have fulfilled without Daisy? What assignment, what destiny could he have fulfilled? What destiny could Cannot be fulfilling now without Gloria. Take your sin. That is why this matter is, is, is so serious. People think it's a matter of I just pick somebody from the road. Or we just say uh, we have found each other. You have to be destiny minded, future minded. You have to be divine plan minded. Don't just find somebody like that. So it is very, very important knowing God's will. God's will in marriage is necessary for the fulfillment of God's purpose for a person's life because I said destiny is company specific. Fourthly, knowing God's will in marriage is necessary to avoid being hooked up with the wrong company for life. You know what it means? All right, I, I, I gave Jeremiah 29 11 for the last one. This one is Amos chapter 3, verse 3. The Bible says, How can two can two walk together except they be agreed? God's will in, is in marriage is necessary to avoid being hooked up with the wrong company, and then that is for life. That is, you married somebody. Who cannot laugh at your jokes? <laughs> I like to crack jokes. And my wife likes to like, like, laugh the laugh. She rarely cracks jokes. If she has a joke, it is disjointed. Doesn't have the way of uh, manufacturing jokes. I mean, but that is my gift. 
I have the gift of making people to laugh. And she has the gift of laughing. And, and, and smiling. Now you can imagine how horrible, terrible it would be. You say something that you think was exciting. And the person is looking at you and saying, what did you say? <laughs> um, please, I'm coming. Let me go and go to the kitchen. And you live like that for life. Somebody who doesn't understand you, you don't understand him. You, you are just official. Literally roommates. Even university roommates have rapport. It's very, very important. May you never taste the wrong relationship. I am speaking to somebody here. You will never taste the wrong association. My God and your God shall deliver you from the wrong connection. Take your sin. And this matter is so serious because we live in the world today. We are the we are marriages are just 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 crumbling like pack of cards, and the devil is having a free day with his agents. very important now this number five point i'm going to make now this number four is god's will is necessary to avoid being hooked up with the wrong company for life you know if it is not a marriage and it is friendship you just walk away <laughs> if the person does not understand you don't understand you just walk away you relate from afar but this one you are in the same cell Inmates. <laughs> Finally, God's will in marriage is necessary to avoid being ushered into a satanic trap for life. I like to give you the difference. It is possible for somebody to be favored of God and to do what it takes and got married in the will of God. It is possible for another person. To, the second category of person is the one who married not the will of God. Just the wrong company. There is a third person that Satan organized wife for. from his family organized husband for him that is frightening you know? there are some people that hell is rejoicing on their marriage day we have finally finished this one while they are marching to the altar with wedding gown and everybody is celebrating hey, they have wedded take oh wow what a wedding hell is jubilating like they did for Samson for, like they did for Samson when he ended with Delilah they were clapping they were drinking there are those hell celebrates so this great potential that is meant to shake the nation is gone this heavy anointing this heavy voice preaching voice singing voice leadership voice political voice gone we have her we have him you don't you don't know that there are it's not everybody you saw in church that came to church some satan brought them to make them hook somebody not everybody who say i love you love you some were sent to destroy your life but they will never find you they will never find you I said they will never find you. If you are saying amen, shout the Lord say amen. Take your sin. If this is the, if I drop the mic at this point, I, I, I'm fulfilled. There 
there are women who told the husband after they married say i was sent from the water for you and i'm happy i succeeded yes and vice versa i saw a young girl married the way into destruction this girl began to sing around the age of 12 angelic voice entered into a marriage that marriage was a damage can i tell you something it's maybe 20 years now i have not heard her sing, sang once since the marriage heavy oil that is to avoid the to, that is lord i cannot afford a trap and if your destiny is heavy satan will be angry if you carry potential if you carry oil if you are headed somewhere if your generation if you are packaged and wired either to financially mark your generation or spiritually impact your generation or to affect your world in any way the devil gets interested he will never get you he will never get you i said he will never get you i've seen anointed men of god so many many years ago entered marriage and you're wondering what happened how did this marriage happen the outcome phew, disaster take yourself that was why the bible said in the book of proverbs chapter 6 proverbs chapter 6 verse 20 he said my son keep your father's commandment and forsake not the law of your mother that is listening to god pay attention to god bind them continually upon your heart and tie them about your neck when you go it will lead you where you sleep it shall keep you when you awake it shall talk with you why for the commandment is light and the law all this is divine direction and reproof of instruction are the way of life to keep you hear god so he can keep you from the evil woman and also evil man from the flattery of the tongue of a strange the evil that evil woman that strange woman that destroyer woman and also evil man destroyer man that can destroy your life he said i want you to hear me so you can dodge it's very specific you see the, the, that passage is very direct the reason why i want you to hear me is so you can dodge Because with our physical eyes, we cannot see. So you know I love you since I've been seeing ladies. I've never loved anyone like you. Since I've been seeing men, in fact, the way you look as if they just manufacture you. You will never miss it. Can that amen sound louder? Take your seat. Is anybody getting anything from here? Do you have any reason to know the will of God? All right, let's move to the next level. We need to know the will of God because it's a prudent wife is from the Lord. The God who created you know who is best suited for you. And it's necessary for you to fulfill purpose. It's necessary to avoid being hooked up with the wrong company. And in fact, it's necessary to escape the trap of hell that can make you now. What are the challenges in finding the right partner? Challenges. Number one is choice based on physical appearance or looks. It's challenging. Choice based 
on physical appearance or looks. You know that the eyes are very deceptive. Eyes can deceive you. Have you ever seen somebody you thought was someone you knew and when you went closer you realized it wasn't the one? Have you ever seen you are driving on the road and or even in the, in the heat of the day it, it was as if water was on the road. They call it mirage. And you arrive and there was no water. Those are the deceptive tendencies of the eye. A person can look like a lamb outside. But a serpent, a viper, a python, full of venom. During one of our marriage classes here, one of the young men who was in the marriage class was given an award for the best behaved young man in the marriage class. The moment they married, he began to beat his wife. And the wife didn't, didn't last two months behaved. Even the eyes of the teachers deceived them. Don't ever forget there is always more to anything than meets the eye. There is more, more, more. And only God knows that more. What was it that led Eve to damnation her eyes I'm sure you remember Genesis chapter 3 you remember chapter 3 verse 6 and 7 and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired she took it and ate it saw that a tree was good for food, pleasant to the eyes. Not everything that looks pleasant to the eyes will be pleasant to your destiny. <laughs> not everybody, not everybody that your eyes, oh, this girl looks good. Wow. This is that, is that, is that. But this young man looks adorable, appealing. Choice based on physical appearance, it damned many people. There are even people that may look like they are so holy, no hearing, nothing. But Satan asked them to package themselves like that. There are some like that. That you will see, oh, only, only is this lady. What a holy girl. Will I let her go? If you're saying choice based on physical appearance the challenge is with that is that you only see what is apparent you don't see what is real you only see container you didn't see content you didn't see the future you just saw the moment number one challenge in finding the right person number two is choice based on human recommendations and orchestrations I just saw a girl I think that girl will be good for you nice girl nice family I just saw a young man. He's a trained engineer. In fact, he did his master's in aquatic 
from leads. It is possible that that may be a channel that God may use to show you his will. It's possible. But strictly based on recommendations and human orchestrations like the way people do matchmaking. The two families are close. Two families are friends. The, fa the father and the, uh, this father and that other father went to King's College together. There are many, there are certain such connections that brought problems to the families. Peaceful friends became friends at war because children are jamming their heads. Choices based on human recommendations and orchestrations. And why this could be dangerous is because the wisdom of man is limited. The the, the, the revelation of man is limited. Not that the people hate you, they wish you well. Just that they themselves don't know the details of who they are trying to recommend to you. Number three, choice based. Choice based on material considerations. Oh, the man is a rich man. I don't want to marry any of her head. <laughs> and there is nothing women hate like suffering. <laughs> and just, just enjoyment. Open the door for me. Thank you. <laughs> And then they'll be flying in the air. <laughs> See, my, my husband just bought me the latest. Oh, oh, oh. The man can join you to his properties. There are some people they achieved everything in life then they now think of marriage it's not wrong but the challenge comes where the wife can become one of the properties acquired i have acquired the final property on top of these properties May you marry who will not suffer you. May you marry where you won't regret because of poverty. And yet, may it not be money that is the reason why you want to marry. Do you see the balance? Don't be married and then you are struggling for what to eat, what to wear, and how to fend for yourself. And then you are looking back to your parents for house rent. That will never be your portion. There are those who also try to marry the lady because she is wealthy. Very highly irresponsible young men. I consider it a shame for any man to be looking for the money the wife is making and don't misunderstand me when a man and his wife becomes married the two becomes one and it becomes a matter of understanding but to say where is your salary bring it now take 20,000 out of it for the food take 50,000 out of it for the children's school fees the other the balance of 30,000. Keep it. Don't touch it. That is a yeshious man. That is a yeshiousness confirmed. Don't touch the rest of
the money. Touch it and deal with you. It's the wife's money. She is begging for transport money. May you never marry such a man. Take your seat. Hallelujah. And all you young men here, your pastor is a responsible man. You are responsible. Receive it by faith. Take your seat. There are also those who marry because the girl is from a wealthy family. See your mouth. your seed. Mouth that wants to eat where he has not planted. Just, there are those that, ah, that my father-in-law will give me connection. Ah, my mother-in-law will, will just, in fact, I cannot look for John. That is here. Yeshiousness again. Don't, if God brings such arrangement your way, to him be all the glory. If God works it out that way, congratulations. But even when that works out, don't make yourself a liability. Don't make it look like it was suffering that made you marry that girl. Or you are trying to find an escape route. That's why some people don't like the girl. Is the is the is either the money or the family money or something that they are looking for? Not the girl. You can treat her very shabbily and vice versa. Please don't make choices based on material consideration. Am I communicating? Did, is God speaking to anybody at all? Can I go on? Number four, are you ready for this? Choice based on desperation. My time is passing. I have to marry now. All my age mates are marrying. My juniors have all married. Everybody is looking at me. They are wondering what is wrong with me. That devil is a liar. Anyone that comes now, I'm just going to say yes. In fact, I'm going to give myself to somebody. That will never be your portion. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 31. They that wait on the Lord, they shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. That is, if you wait, you can't waste that is, if you wait on him, you will take your flight. You won't miss your flight. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. Psalm 27 verse 14. It, okay, good. Psalm 27 verse 14 says, Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. He shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Don't marry out of frustration. I decree for somebody today those seasons of frustration they are over forever I asked one girl one day when they wanted to marry and that was like a frustration arrangement I said do you really love the man she said, I don't know <laughs> is, you want to marry him you love him, you, are, you, you think you can stay with him for life? I'm not sure. That will never be your portion. Finally, for today, is choice based on sentiments. 
sentiment. You pity somebody, sit there, you marry him. <laughs> Choice based on sentiment. Marrying out of sympathy. Oh, she's from such a poor family. Oh, he is from such a poor family. He has suffered so much. So many cares have said no to him. <laughs> and he's heartbroken now. I'm the only one he has met now. I don't want him to commit suicide. <laughs> you know, the devil makes people to think upside down at times. If there's so many guests have said no to him, that's the reason to find out. Why are they saying no? Oh, the girl is such a lone ranger. Nobody likes her. Let me go close to her and encourage her. In fact, just marry her out of this suffering. Just marry her and rescue her from this suffering. No way. You pity them, you sympathize with them, you have compassion for them, intercede for them. Ask God to help them. You don't hand over your destiny to anybody you don't know out of pity. You don't bundle your life and your future because you, you have some emotional, sentimental feelings. Somebody they said, maybe as a, a man, you brought a girl home. And your friend told you this girl is not good for you. Relations told you, and so forth and so on. Then yourself began to see signs in the girl that showed you is not correct. They said, why is everybody telling me like that? What is wrong with the girl? Then who do they want to marry her? I will marry. Let me see what anybody will do. That you don't do your out of just pure sentiment. Listen. Marriage, the journey of marriage is not a journey of one day wedding is a day marriage is for life these things you cannot easily change should not be entered into in a hurry somebody say amen marriage out of pity shouldn't be done I've seen people who tell each other because I married you I've seen, I've seen a girl tell a man, I saw better men than you. There are four, five men around at the same time. Just because I said yes to you. And you were the least of those five. Then why did you? This is real life. Oh. My wife, are you aware? Real life. She used a statement that I heard it from her mouth for the first time. She said, I saw digital men and married analog. <laughs> he said, The man is pure analog. <laughs> I can never forget. I heard it for the first time. You be used for a person in front of the man. In front of the man, said, is the man is analog. <laughs> I just told you what I said. I got married analog. Analog. Question.
question is why did you marry him if you saw satellite and internet and you saw cnn and you say you marry nta <laughs> oh, you man, NTA is good. Let's choose another one. That, that, that was what she said. She said, it's an analog man. Analog. He said, the men were all better than him. Please, never marry out of scent. You know, when you are a pastor in the kind of situation we are, you hear a lot of things. You won't believe what some things will, some people will say. Especially on marital, marriage matter. We have counseled people for three hours, four hours, till 1 a.m. And they still went and divorced. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Having said all of that, please it is not by physical appearance, not by human recommendations, not by material considerations, not desperation, not sentiment. Let me add this. There is something they call the caste system. Where they say this person is from something caste, this one is from something caste. In the Lord, there is nothing like that. If God if God can admit us who were Gentiles, strangers to the commonwealth of Israel, into God, how much less? Say this one is from non-royal family. This one is from royal family. This one is from this. This one is from that. The marriage that was contracted in, in Britain recently, the marriage of the prince, he broke all rules. The mother of that girl is pure black. Hallelujah. Let's take it a step further then. We have seen the necessity of God's will. My time is rushing. And we have seen the challenges in finding the right partner. What are baseline requirements for God's will in marriage? Baseline requirements, like we say in medicine baseline requirements number one that is if god is going to lead you what must be on ground number one be genuinely born again be his sheep god does not lead strangers let him be your shepherd Psalm 23 verse 1 says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. The Lord is my shepherd. If he is not your shepherd, he cannot lead you. The shepherd only leads his sheep. John 10, 27. He says, My sheep hear my voice. They hear my voice. They hear what I want to tell them. They hear my voice. Be genuinely born again. Number two, be obedient to God. Be obedient to God. God does not waste his direction on the disobedient. Psalm 68 verse 6. God set the solitary in families. He bringeth out those which are bound with chains, but the rebellious dwell in a dry land. Psalm 25 verse 9, The meek will he guide in judgment, and the meek will he teach his way. Will he teach his way. If you are not obedient to God in basic things, you don't... You are not serving him, you are in church for donkey years, so you shall serve the Lord, you are doing nothing. You have never spoken to one soul since you are born again. You don't know what it means to give anything to God, whether it is offerings or tithes or anything. You don't know what it means to obey God in little, little, even scriptural things. Then suddenly you appear and say, God, who should I marry? 
and God will say, who are you talking to? Yeah? You, you, you have not done two plus two is four. And then you, you, you enter the further mass class with Paul Daniel to do permutations and integrations and binomial theorems. And, uh, and all the calculuses and all of them. Can where they are asking you to give the square root of this plus the square root of this plus. No, you must be obedient fundamentally first. Be obedient to God in basic things. That is number two. Number three. Place a very high value. On God's plan for your life. High value. A high value for your destiny. That is if you want God to, to lead you into this perfect plan. Place a high value. Have a healthy bread. A healthy bread of missing God. Healthy one. Healthy. A healthy bread. That bread guided me. I was it. I dreaded missing God. Missing God in marriage. Missing God in ministry steps. I'm missing God. I just it was just there by a heavy value for the future. Am I gonna be careful? If you don't I, I, I told you the story of, of Alice in the Wonderland. I, I watched it, I think when the our children were younger. I, I came across it one day and I, I looked at it and I think it was the cat or saw the big bird was going somewhere. I don't know who it was in the cart he was asking where does this road lead to and they asked her where are you going and she answered nowhere in particular then they answered her then keep going because it doesn't matter where the road is leading <laughs> if, if, if you don't know where you are going there's no need to ask where the road is going just follow the road let it take you anywhere if you are if you don't think you have a, a heavy future marry anybody if all you want out of life is just flesh on flesh i don't want to, to to be burning in my flesh anymore i don't want immoral temptations anymore i want to deliver children fast and i want to i want to i want to i want to have my own children if all that you are looking at is just physical matters then it doesn't matter who you marry but if you have a value for your future, for the plan of God for your life, and you have a value for what you are meant to become in life, then it matters who to marry. So you place a very high value, a value known to God, and known to those who know you. Is that number three? Number four, be desperate for his will. Be very desperate. Very desperate. I gave you please put down Philippians chapter 3 verse 12 to 13 in that point number 3 and then be desperate for his will Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 1 I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and I will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved Habakkuk chapter 2 I will watch I will be there I, I, I'm restless. Uzziah chapter 6 verse 3. Then shall we know if we follow on to know the Lord. Just be desperate. Show to God that you are helpless in this matter. You want to know what he wants you to do with this life, with your life. Be desperate for his way. That is number three. Number four, right? Number five. Maintain a high level of prayerfulness and sensitivity. High level. Call unto me, and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you knew not. Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 3. Maintain a very high level of prayerfulness and sensitivity. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 13. He said, And you shall seek me and find me when you shall search for me with the whole of your heart. A very high level of prayerfulness and sensitivity. Lord, you know, I don't want, I won't miss it. I won't miss it. 
for so many years of my life at least once a week i remembered at least once a week before i be, before i asked god for who to marry because there was a time where god okay i'll come to that shortly before the time where i was now praying who is it before that time it was a matter of for the next seven ten years i can't remember minimum once a week father whoever because my wife to be will be i ask that you prepare her i ask that you will cause me not to miss who it is i wasn't asking to know i was just praying for it am i communicating very very important every time i remembered ministry to pray for my for my assignment on it i also remembered marriage because i knew they went together and so i would pray for my assignment ahead of me and i also pray i won't enter a wrong marriage father prepare the right person thank you lord it wasn't time for me to ask who is it so i wasn't asking who is it just like we were told that there is a time for everything very important prayerfulness and sensitivity number one, six right avoid unequal yoking avoid it avoid unequal yoking what is unequal yoking born again christian marrying an ungodly person second corinthians chapter 6 verse 14 if, if unequal yoking is in your mind for any reason forget divine direction be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers for what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness and what communion has light with darkness and what concord has christ with Belial? or what part has he that believed with an infidel beloved what agreement has the temple of god you are the temple with idols for you are the temple of the living god now listen from what i have said so far it is clear to you that even inside the church it's not everybody you can marry not that the person is a sinner but basically that the person may not be suited to your life and your future and your destiny how much less talented talented a person who is not in god at all unregenerated mind no vision for god no passion for heaven don't risk your life like that can't it's not possible it's not for consideration don't even dream of i want to marry someone and convert him later well done holy spirit since you now have the power to convert people you are holy ghost Follow me, let me blast in tongues. Yes, there is people deceive themselves. The Bible is, is clear, is clean on all matters. Someone say loud amen. So please bear that in mind. Now, so if a person has the possibility and tendency of marrying an unbeliever and that tendency is a consideration will of god is not in question don't ask you can go ahead and make your choice then your choice will make you that was number six number seven avoid non-specific undefinable relationship with the opposite gender non-specific undefinable relationship with the opposite gender for obvious reasons coast is not clear your choice can't be clear did you hear what i said just say non-specific non-definable there is let's say brother john and then a sister joy 
Do that is your name, I'm sorry. We see them together all the time. Are they in courtship? No. Are they going to get married? They have not said so. What is happening? They are just in the same department. I want to talk to you. <laughs> Anytime somebody wants to find where John is, they ask John. Whenever they want to find where Joy is, they ask John. But they are not in country. Just friends. Can I ask you a question? Is it possible for John to ask God for the will of God? And it will be clear to him who that will is. How many of Joy will appear? Many of you know that if you hold, and I think we have coins these days still. What is the biggest coin now? How many of you know that even the sun, you can block the view of the sun if you hold the coin close enough to your eyes? There are people you just choke your life with that block your view of reality. is why the coast must be absolutely clear. You are not into any relationship, emotional relationship with anybody. You like, you, you, you love the brethren. You, you, are, you, are, you are kind to people. You, you, you relate with anybody but nobody has a grip on your heart. So that the coast can be clear. So that when it is time to perceive reality, it will be clear. Am I communicating? Can I ask you a second question? What will happen when Brother John appears one day? I say, Hi, Sister John. Just wanted to introduce to you who God revealed to me. <laughs> Join me, laugh. Oh. <laughs> See, you can you can understand you can understand what people do to themselves without knowing brother john appears and says sister john you know you have been such a good girl we have been such nice friends and i really appreciate your friendship thank you also for the prayer you've been praying for me concerning life partner god finally answered i wanted to introduce janet to you Or jamming. What will joy do? You may give both of them dirty slap first. He might give the two of them dirty slap first. You this wicked devil. I thought you were a brother. Get out! And you Jezebel follow him. That is what we do to ourselves when we are just playing around with fire. We are just closed. Nothing, nothing really. Young man, don't let anybody pray against you. Because after you got married, the girl that felt jilted can tie you in prayer for some duration. And if they are occultic people, they take you up in their realm. They don't play around with you. Young men, don't play with the heart of ladies. Don't play around with any girl. If you are not the one meant to marry them, clear out. Don't give anybody hope. Don't give them expectation. Don't let them feel like they are the possibility. The hearts of young ladies are so tender. He silly moved. Now here is a young man. No, nothing is really happening. They gave you spaghetti. You chop. They buy you time. You collect. Nothing is happening. 
That's the Yeshua's mentality. It's by you tie that you didn't watch for her. In her mind, she's buying tie for her future husband. Are you hearing what I'm saying here today? The next time that brother calls you and says, Please, I'll pass through your house. Is there lunch or something? Ask him, What are you looking for? Say, Identify yourself. Take your seat. And please, sisters, it is when you give somebody your heart that they can break it. give your heart to anybody who has not indicated marital interest don't put it up don't the assumption bring frustration it's coming coming say you will talk you will soon talk and the man is just hanging around to waste you until he gets the right person by the time you proceed a bit you say please make your intentions known some people say, if I say that, maybe we may get angry. I go, let him go. If he belongs to you and he's a genuine person, he will tell you what he's there for. I'm preaching to you from my heart. Because I am the one that the problem will return back to. Counseling. Counseling. I am the one the problem return back to. I won't be able to tell you the kind of things we handle. Marriage under three months, they are back. Talking divorce. Three months. It will never be your portion. It will never be your portion. So please avoid such non-specific, non-definable or undefinable relationship that is not defined avoid it just for the clarity of vision just for the clarity of the coast so that it will be clear when god is speaking to you keep the action side free as we say in chemistry so that it's only the right sub substrate that will bind and finally number eight be open to god's leading Romans chapter 8 verse 14 As many as are led by the Spirit of God They are the sons of God Be open to God's leading Open God only leads those that are willing to be led When you already have what you want Or rather you are inflexible It will be difficult for God to lead you Lord, I am in your hands Your perfect will be done Say amen. Finally, conclusion of our second to the last. How do we access the will of God? My time is going, but I'm, I'm going to do a covenant breaking tonight. Are you ready for that? Every anti marital cause, please. Marital delay. Right. Assessing the will of God. What are the ways that somebody might access? Okay, this is the will of God for me in marriage. Number one, through the in through inward knowing what we call the inward witness as many as are led by the spirit of god they are the source of god mark chapter 5 verse 30 when the woman with the issue of blood taught jesus the bible says jesus knowing in himself knowing in himself so inside all of a sudden you are not thinking about the person you are not there was nothing like we just said your coast is clear your mind is free all of a sudden you just saw this person and just there is that knowing you pushed it aside you let it go and you faced your front and then again it records now this person has fulfilled all the conditions we are talking about he's born again he's a child of god you pushed it aside and then he just, he just like it like it happened to to to, to moses the bible says it came to his heart it just keeps coming to the heart that is one way and it's a legitimate way number two is true inward peace that is there is someone around whom 
you feel an unusual level of tranquility and peace even their thoughts just peaceful a certainty an assurance that tomorrow is co confirmed and then you can follow up with that and say lord what are you talking about i am feeling so much peace about this person is there anything and then god can further grant you direction psalm 85 verse 8 he said i will hear what the lord will say he said the lord will speak peace to his people he will speak peace to his people through inward peace number three is true inward pictures and revelations in joel chapter 2 verse 28 it shall come to pass in the last days that i'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy your young men shall see visions old men shall dream dreams so we have there just pictures in what picture the face of a person coming as a picture repeatedly not in the night in the daytime you are not thinking about the person it's not on your schedule it's not what you are planning for just in that and that's how you know when god is speaking to you you were not thinking about a thing and out of the blues your thought was interrupted or your your, your mind was interrupted that is in what pictures and revelation joel again chapter 2 verse 28 and then true dreams and visions this is where you know outrightly saw a dream or saw a vision but i like to give a caution because I'm in the dream again you are not planning you are not thinking of anything all of a sudden you saw um, yourself and somebody else maybe sitting and see there's a marriage ceremony or maybe something like that and then it comes again and again and again because scriptures must be fulfilled in the mouth of two or three witnesses you don't see just one thing and conclude that that is what it is am i communicating at all now we must be careful with dreams because dreams can come from three sources one from the devil two from yourself and then of course totally from god the dreams from the devil have some very uh, they can have scary scenes or you wake up from the dream and your, your heart is filled with fear anxiety tension you know that is from a wrong source the dream from yourself is where uh, you, you have been thinking about the matter then you dreamt of it how many of you watch a bad movie and then when you slept you dreamt of some things that were horrible in the same manner if you are thinking of a boy or a girl for a long time you might see yourself in the night match it to the altar dim, dim, dim. and meanwhile it came from your thought actually you have been wishing that you should dream that dream then you dreamt it by yourself <laughs> You dreamt yourself the dream. <laughs> so we must be careful. If, 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 if you have someone in your heart already and you ask and you want God to leave you by that means it might not be correct. But out of the blues, then all of a sudden this comes. And then you decide, okay, well, let me watch it. That could be a way. That was number one. Number four. Number five is true love and affection. And this is not infatuation. This is love and affection. Just pure, undefiled love. If you look at 1 Corinthians chapter 13 from verse 1 to the end, it showed us that love is one of the ways in which the Holy Spirit can guide us. He said, I show you a more excellent way. Word of knowledge, word of wisdom, design of spirit. The one that is the most excellent is the way of love. Alright? Just in your heart of heart. This is not lost not based on tall height short fat this or that it's not a, just out it's pure undefiled it's clean it's neat this love does not think anything physical it doesn't bring imaginations of immoral scenarios it's just unadulterated pure clean and then you might begin to realize all right looks like god is saying something in this area let me watch it that is love towards a person and that person stands out in the crowd there are so many people of that particular person that was number five number six is out of scripture first corinthians the first samuel chapter 3 verse 21 you know god can say anything out of scripture and the lord appeared again in shiloh for the lord revealed himself to samuel in Shiloh by the word of the Lord so revelations can come out of the word very very strange way 
the pastor is preaching on something totally different but out of the passage you are seeing your husband or wife mysteriously weeping may endure but for a night joy coming in the morning weeping may endure for a night but joy and the young man has been eyeing somebody called joy I, in his in his <laughs> not 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 a bad eye just it's just occurring to him this person might be your wife and he said lord i'm trusting you to help me and then out of scripture but again this will not be solitary this will have diverse confirmations am i communicating at all and, and i'm not saying that you should randomly carry your bible carry your bible and open that say lord lead me who will i marry and somebody just open it and judas hangs himself <laughs> that happened to somebody he opened it and judas hung himself god forbid because <laughs> open again Go and do that likewise. God forbid. Oh, you open the Bible. Bam! And Delilah went after Samson. So don't, don't, don't position yourself and say, I, I, I want to open the Bible. Let God lead me like that. You just leave it for God and leave it. Let him direct you. That was out of the scripture. Was that number six? And then number seven. True prophetic confirmation. I like you to, I like you to know where I put this. This was number seven. That was the last. True prophetic confirmation. Where, and I called it confirmation because the thing the person is telling you is only coming to confirm what you already know. Hosea chapter 12 verse 10 he says, I have also spoken by prophets and I have multiplied visions and used similitudes by the ministry of the prophets. Yeah, the person, what the person is telling you is just a confirmation. Oh, um, I don't know whether you, I'm hearing a name or there's somebody like this or I see you and somebody, something, something. It only comes to confirm. When somebody says, I see you marrying so and so person, and you are hearing it for the first time, knock it out. Knock it out completely like it never existed. Ask God, because that will be, can be a trap to trap you for life. And then you clean your mind. And if God chooses and it is this is true. It might come on his own. Another form. You deal with this squarely until you are sure it is from God. How many of you know that nobody can prophesy a marriage for you? Because if they do it, they may have to live with you in that marriage to guarantee his success. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Now before we conclude as a firebrand young man passion for God passion for the future, passion for the work of God, I wasn't actually planning to be a full time pastor, I wanted to be a doctor, medical doctor, practice do a lot of things and have a lot of money, use it to sponsor the gospel, but what at the certain time in my life like I told you, every time I remember my future, I remember my assignments, I'll remember marriage, and I'll pray at least once a week minimum. Because I fasted once a week for ministry. For years. And for my destiny. And then I, I said to God, and, and then I'll say to God, please help me not to miss it. And whoever it is, I want you to prepare her. And I pray for that marriage not to be successful. So at the point, God now spoke to me. And he said to me, because at that time, somebody now began to advertise somebody for me. Yes, the person was not a bad person. Neither, the, neither was the person 
he was advertising. Good sister, fire brand, clean record. But that wasn't God's plan for me at all. And it wasn't this sister, the sister sitting here now. The one who just spoke before I came up. You know the sister I'm talking about. And it wasn't that sister. So after around that time, God must put to me, sir. Set yourself apart so I can show you who it is that I want you to settle with for life and ministry. How did I hear God? Talk the way I've been telling you. I wasn't thinking such a thought. All of a sudden, it came in words, interrupted. So I set aside like seven days. Lord, whoever it is, help me to know. And then he began to come in fragments. First of all, the person can do this. The person can do this. He told me about her and worship and singing. And the person can do this. And the picture wasn't clear yet because I see one or two things were coming per day. I don't want anybody to look at my hand. I said, Lord, 
let her know what you told her. Then I said again, Lord, let her know that I have known, that she has known. So, by the time I was going, the coast was clear. There was no hindrance. There was no possibility of a no. There wasn't even a possibility of let me pray and come. It was on the spot, sir. No, 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 because the prayer went ahead, and the work was already done, notice was already filed. <laughs> God will give you easy access. May our testimony be reproduced in your life, in your family, and in your children, in Jesus' name. That was number two. Pray for the other person. And then number three. Make the move. Once you have confirmed and reconfirmed, you have prayed for the other person. Make the move. Now this move major is made by the man. It's made by the man. For sisters, it, it, it is not respectful on you to tell the man that you saw a vision about yourself and him or something so they don't look down on you the only thing you can do is to put them under pressure lord let the man lose his sleep let him not waste my time let him lose his rest let him lose his peace you know the, the testimony that maybe testified at uh, the lord that the other day and he said he put the man under pressure to be on the way in a hurry god answers prayer so let the man don't waste my time. If I if I have known, you must know. And if you haven't known, then Lord, I hope it is not an insensitive human being. But you put the man under prayer pressure. And in a hurry, he must appear. Somebody say amen. Pass every living through three tests. How many tests? Every direction you get, either for marriage or ministry, or anything, three tests, or like we say in Africa, three tests. And you heard from me I did some medical tests. That's the plural of tests. Number one is called the peace test. Are you at peace? The Lord will speak to you. The Lord will speak to you. If you are at peace, is the other person at peace? Now, I am even talking even as the relationship has started. You have not married yet. Don't marry anybody that is looking like a sheep being dragged to the slaughter. Don't marry anybody like that. When two people are about to marry, they are the most excitable people you ever met. Excited, excitable, excited with each other. But when you ask somebody, it's just looking somehow as if, well, maybe because time is passing. Then you just marry and see what happens later. So somebody says, oh, well, if I say no now, my uncle will not be happy. Please, let the peace be confirmed with you and with the other person. Peace, excitement, exuberance, excitement. While we were in gossip, we did gossip for two years and four months. I knew that the marriage was headed for blissfulness because the signs were clear. You know, the walking step of the masquerade can tell you danceability. The way it works. Those that cannot dance, they just they will be like that. If they dance in one, even they walk is a dance. It's walking with some swag into the arena. Am I communicating? Peace test. You are peace. Or you think about the marriage and your heart starts beating. 
you feel that When it was time to marry, my wife to be then said yes. I was agreeable. Am I communicating? Confirm that love. I asked that girl, I said, You know the man? I'm not sure. I don't know. I was too shocked. Don't manage it. Don't pretend it. Don't fake it. Make sure it is real with you and real with the person. Finally, time test. Don't be in a hurry, bachelor. You have been waiting all this while. Don't be in a hurry, spinster. I saw a young lady, she has reduced to a shadow of herself. I think she met the man in January and they married in February or something. Or April or something. Just a month or two months ago. I told her, I said, don't kill yourself. Be alive first. It takes a, a person who is alive to be married. Because the man has run off and just living anyhow. You know, Peter said to Jesus, Anywhere you go, I'm following you. If everybody will run away from you, see me here. Jesus said, You turn. <laughs> he said, Before the cock crow twice, you will deny me three times. Do you know the meaning of cockroach? Time. We use cockroach to measure time in the village. Then it is 5 o'clock, 4 a.m. 5 o'clock, day is breaking. He said, Peter, you love me, let's give it time. Time will prove. Your manner, your behavior. There are people, it's only, if only you gave a little time, the man's real character would have come out. Lord, show me this man. Who is he? He said, Peter, cock will grow twice. You will deny Christ. That is your frequency of denial. <laughs> Look at your neighbor saying, Check it with peace. 
prove it with love. Give it time. Look at somebody and say, check it with peace. Prove it with love. Give it time. I don't know how many times I have said finally. But finally, finally, finally. What do you do if what appears to, the, to be the will of God is not working out? Hello? If you claim you heard God, you saw a vision, you saw a revelation, God spoke to you, you love the person, everything appears correct. Maybe you went to the person and the person said, Me, God forbid. I've seen people who told me I ask God for bread. He can't give me stone. God And the brother was 100% sure God spoke. Or the lady is sure of the man who is the will of God. Only for him or for her to see the man distributing wedding card of another person. She hasn't spoken to the man. Continuously. I'll say three things. What appears to be the will of God? Because the fact that God says, This is who I want for you, does not guarantee that the person will agree. It doesn't guarantee that the person will align with God's will because human beings have the will of their own. It's not a guarantee. God is saying, In my perfect plan. This man is you and him who work out can work out the destiny I have for you. And the man refused to hear God. Or the man was carried away with his eyes. Or decided to marry who they packaged to him from the village. What do you do? Number one, don't kill yourself. I don't know how best to say it. Don't let me leave it like that. Don't kill yourself because someone you thought was the will of God refused. Don't ruin your life. Don't perish in, in depression or frustration. Give me five minutes. Don't kill yourself. Number two, go back to God for recalculation. I'm sure some of you understand what I'm talking about. Go back to God for recalculation and recalibration. You know, in in in, in uh, England, in America, and so on, some of people in Abuja here now, where they use GPS to locate an address. You are driving and he said take right take left and so on in 500 meters we are left and so on and then at that 500 meters you miss the road or something happened you went straight then the gps said recalculating the road you are meant to follow you have passed it but let's check another road that can take you to the same destination finally number three trust god to recreate another person that can fit into your destiny. Trust God. God who made can remake. This is where some people miss the idea of God's will. Somebody say, oh, if God has a very perfect will for man in marriage, it means if one person miss the will of God, then the whole world will miss it. Because if this person married the, the wrong person, the one who is meant to marry this person married another person, the one who is meant to marry another person married. No, it doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. Even though God said this person is my plan for you, and the person failed to meet up the plan, God will work out a perfect 
of vanity. The, pe the person can fail, but the plan can fail. It will work out a perfect person that will fit into the space that the other person failed to fit in and fulfill if not better, a better plan. I have one example. Saul, God said, I will make your throne to last forever. But Saul messed up. When God chose a better person than Saul, what was his name? The person failed, but the plan stood. People may fail around you, but the plan shall stand. Anybody excited? Stand with a shout of praise. A louder shout of praise. Now, listen to me. I don't want anybody walking out, even if you are in the overflow. I want to ask you a question. I want to do a covenant renouncing, but it is already after nine. We have another meeting in one month's time. Can we leave, the, leave it till that one month? It was done now. Uh, because it's possible that there is somebody who can locate his partner between now and the next one month. So, there is no delay. So, please give me 10 minutes and let's get that done. Is that okay? At the most 15 minutes. But anybody who had something massive, life changing today, give the Lord seven hallelujahs. One, two, three. I am just too excited tonight. I'm too excited not just for tonight, but knowing that in another one month we have another. And then one month after that we have another. The devil is in trouble. Let the city know and the nation know that something like this is happening. Again, lift your hands. Is that the cameraman moving or... I told you I don't want any movement within 10 15 minutes. Please, gallery. Lift your hands and appreci appreciate God for what you receive tonight. Thank Him, honor Him, adore Him. Worship Him tonight. Glorify His holy name tonight. Lift your voice. Worship Him. In Jesus precious name lift up your hands high. what we're going to do Dr. Mr. Mencher is going to lead you in the renouncing of causes anti-marital spirit husband spirit wife all those things that prevent people from getting married that tie people down we're going to take authority over that and we are going to follow up this apart from the coming month follow up meeting this week is also revival week the Wednesday service at the Lord's Garden and then the worship and wonders night it is titled breaking yokes and destroying bondages let it be like a part two for you for anything that has tied you down for the yoke to be broken I wish that we have the expectation sleep if you don't have the expect anybody have the expectation sleep if you don't have the expectation sleep for that program I like you to pick it up at the Lord's Garden tomorrow healing service on Wednesday, that's right, that's the expression. Where you write down the bondages or yokes that must be broken off your life, you write down for yourself, you pick one for yourself, and then pick one for your friend for that worship, word, and wonders night. And the Lord will bless you. Lift up your hands everywhere you are, and let's give the Lord the praise.